Good morning, at least it's morning for me right now. And today I'm gonna to talk about mushrooms that I have growing in the wood chips. Finally, I'm showing off my property a little bit after doing a lot of tours, kind of waiting for the roosters to uh, shut up, but I'm tired of waiting. Uh, I only have two mushrooms to show right now. And I've been, because I've been super busy, I couldn't get out here sooner with the camera. But there's enough uh, stuff, different stages of mushrooms right now that it's still interesting. Most of my wood chips are arborist wood chips that I get from a tree service. And I believe they're mostly conifer. Sometimes I can get a load where I could tell it's pretty much all cottonwood or at least deciduous, but for the most part it's conifer. And because culinary wood chip mushrooms like hardwoods, I made sure for my pristine wine caps that I would chip my own maple trees. And so this spot has wood chips that I chipped. So I knew that they would be pure maple, hardwood. And uh, yeah, I, when I started them though, I started them kind of later in the spring and they still came up in a month or two, even though you would think mushrooms are spring and fall crops. They came last summer, but since they were already in the ground over the winter, they came up earlier this year. Uh, they were already up when I came back from Eastern Washington, I believe. But anyway, so I have lots of, let's get to it. I have lots of, these are the first ones that came up and so you can see that they're already broken down and uh, I didn't there's so many that grew here that I didn't get to all of them it's hard for me to get to, all, to eat all of them because they just grow all at once and I still haven't worked out a good dehydrate a fast good dehydration method because they're very moist so you got to put them on high heat if you don't want to spend 20 hours dehydrating them. But so here's some more broken down wine caps. One thing that's really interesting about my property is because it's at different elevations, the mushrooms here started earlier than the mushrooms, just a little bit higher. They're both so close together that there's both areas are still south of the house. So really the only difference is just a little bit of elevation, I think. This is the first area that fruited. But then later, these fat guys came. Look how humongous they are. And I don't know if I would eat them at this age. Look at that, we have a slug friend. I don't think I've seen a mushroom this fat before. <laughs> when I got this pot, I'm like, this is a really big pot. Because I didn't have my smaller pot. And little did I know that it would fit the whole pot. There's two slugs. Um, I'm pretty good at telling which ones are invasive. I mean, most of my slugs are Aryans, and those are all invasive. Yeah, there's another fat one. So those came and went. And then the area up there that I'm going to show you, then that one fruited. And then this one is fruiting again. Is it this time at the edges? Let's see here. So this is probably the age when you want to harvest them. And that one just came right up. A beautiful specimen. So some videos on YouTube 
might say that to start wine cap beds, you want to put them in a tub with cardboard and let them run a bit before you put them in your wood chip, before you put them in your wood chip mulch. I hate when people complicate things to appear more erudite. If you do just even a little bit of research, you would learn that wine caps are very aggressive and the whole cardboard method is for uh, mushrooms that are weak and have problems with competition and wine caps are just not that. So all you have to do, as long as you have hardwood wood chips, is do your wood chip layer, your spawn layer. I did sawdust spawn because I didn't want grain. I don't want to feed the rodents. So wood chip, spawn, wood chip, spawn, wood chip. That's it. And then it came up in like a month, month and a half. I used the um, stem butt method to move the mushrooms from this area to another bed, which I'm going to show you. But this is an example of a stem butt. I take this and then I'm just going to bury it in another spot. And because I don't have any more dedicated maple areas, I'm going to just put this under some random conifer wood chips because it's better than, you know, nothing. You know, I mean, maybe when they start flaring like that, you're not supposed to eat them. But I think the only problem with them is that they're, is that they're drier. But it's not like it's super bad or anything. Look at that. These, those are nice stages to eat them in, I think. That one's probably a little old. Also, one thing that I noticed on some of the the first batch that I had was that oh look at that. Isn't that cute? He is going all up in there. And that is an invasive. It's like they're all invasive. I don't even see banana slugs anymore. So that's propagation. But the, anyway, so the first batch that I had, and maybe it was because of the time of year, if I cut it in the middle and it was aged enough, I would see larva inside them and this next batch and I don't know if it's because it's a, just a little bit later in the year I don't see the larva so but who knows there could be like little eggs in there it's just like fruit you know when you eat fruit you could be eating little eggies but the, yeah the first batch when they got a little bit aged, there was, it looked like a moth larva inside, kind of like how you might see in a bowl eat. And then there are also pseudoscorpions also in it, in the cap somewhere. So I'm just not seeing it in this next batch. They look perfectly scrumptious. This is an area that is the all conifer, but pretend you have quality wood chips here. You just take your stem butts, do that, and that. That's it. And that's what I did here in this area. I actually carved, I actually took out the conifer chips in the circle here, and then I put my remainder maple wood chips in here. And then did the, I just buried my stem butts. And then this, and then it quickly myceliated. So now I have all this. And yeah, so like this small one that we found down there was the second, like a second fruiting down there. But this is the first fruiting up here. But just a couple days ago, these were nice and, and small like this. And then it got hot. It was hot yesterday, and so they got big and they dehydrated. There's probably a really easy, cheap method to dehydrate these just out in the sun. So that's something I got to figure out. Yeah, 
but this is what happens when you're super busy. You miss all this yummy food. You just have to be on it. But I imagine there will also be a second batch here as well. I just have to harvest these and then take these butts and then move them. So I came out kind of in a shady area to try to find you a young one so you can see the different stages of this mushroom too. And here it is. So I, I did find a young one. And this mushroom I first discovered in the wood chips, I don't know, like a couple of years ago. But these are everywhere. And this is how they look when they're young. I have identified them, well, a couple of years ago, I thought that they were Springfield caps. And then when I did some more searching, uh, I discovered there is one that's similar to that called a bearded field cap or a cracked cap. <laughs> and as you can see, because of the cracking, it's, I'm going to go ahead and call it a cracked cap. <laughs> If it is a, cr a cracked cap, it's an agrocybate, and it's actually in the same family as the wine cap, which is maybe why they're, they've been fruiting together side by side. So that's a strophoriaceae strif <laughs> family. Um, so yeah, it's in, the, it's in the same family as that wine cap. Another thing that identifies this from the Springfield cap is that it's uh, umbanet. I think it's pronounced umbanet, which is basically a little knob right here in the center. So I could see, see there's a little knob here and it's also paler. I want to see if we can find a ring around it. Kind of like how the wine cap has a ring. And maybe this is considered the ring. The spores are brown. See, there's the, there's the ring. But let me know if the comments, if you think it's not a cracked cap. I'll show you how prevalent they are in my wood chips, and then you'll see more cracking. Also, in terms of edibility, the internet says that they are edible, but because they're bitter and because you can confuse them with toxic mushrooms, you're supposed to not eat them. And you see for this one, you can see that the spores are brown. These are the spores from the mushroom above it. I guess maybe it could be a survival food, but because uh, I'm not eating it, I'm not like hardcore trying to ID it. I'm happy. I'm happy just calling it an agrocybe. There's more of that cracking up close. Here's how they look older. There's more cracking. You see them underneath my fennel stalks. I think that's enough for me now. I'm gonna head back inside and start my day. See you soon.